Hi, in this video, I will be discussing about the classification of carbohydrates. I will be telling you the structure of carbohydrates, their varied classifications, the reducing and the non-reducing sugars. All of these are as your questions. I will be telling you all those and also some mucopolysaccharidosis, the diseases, the disorders. Okay, I will be telling you the clinical features. I will be telling you the classification of those mucopolysaccharidosis, everything. And this topic is very important in detail. I will be telling you. All the frequently asked questions, the most probable and potential questions which may be asked in another exams. So, this is a very important topic from exam point of view. Now, we start with classification of carbohydrates. See, first of all, we should know what are carbohydrates, the definition of carbohydrates. See, the carbohydrates are the aldehyde or ketone derivatives of polyhydric alcohols. Okay, their general formula is CNH2NON where n is the number of carbon atoms. Now, this general formula, this has been asked in an exam. So, you see how important this topic is. This is a question. This general formula of carbohydrate is in question. Okay. Now, we will see the classification. The carbohydrates are classified into monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides, polysaccharides. This depends on the number of the unit of saccharides which is included in those. So, we will be dealing with this monosaccharides. First of all, monosaccharides, see, monosaccharides, these include the building blocks of carbohydrates, okay. These are the single units, these are the building blocks of carbohydrates. These are simple form of carbohydrates which cannot be further hydrolyzed into simpler form. This is very important, this is the definition of monosaccharide that they cannot be further hydrolyzed into simpler forms. They contain one sugar unit, minimum number of carbon possible in monosaccharide is 3, and maximum number may be up till 9, means 3 to 9 is the range for the carbon atoms in monosaccharides. We have particular generic names according to the number of carbon atoms. Okay, now we will be seeing those generic names. See, like for number, when the carbon number is 3, 3 carbon atoms are there, generic name is triosis. When there are 4 carbon atoms, they are called as tetrosis. Similarly, when 5, it is called pentosis. When 6, this is hexoses. Hexoses, you all must be familiar with hexoses. Glucose is a hexose. Common example. Similarly, 7 goes to heptoses and 9 is nanoses. So, this is the generic names. They are important for recognition of the saccharide. Next one, disaccharides. Disaccharides yield two molecules of same or different monosaccharides on hydrolysis. Di means two, means it is it is composed of two molecules, okay. They may be same or different monosaccharides. They are divided into two types. First one is non-reducing, second is reducing disaccharides. Non-reducing implies what? The functional groups are involved in glycosidic bond formation. So, no free functional groups are there. No free functional groups are there and reducing sugars, their free functional groups are present. Now, we will be seeing reducing disaccharides. See this table, disaccharide, sugar units and linkage. Okay, this is very important table because you may be getting many questions from this table only. You may be given a disaccharide and you may be asked the sugar units. This is one question. You may be getting a disaccharide, you may be asked the linkage between its sugar units. Okay, so the linkages are equally as important as the sugar units are important for these disaccharides. You should know all of them. First of all, we will see maltose. The sugar units are alpha D glucose, alpha D glucose. Okay. Similar units are there. And the linkage is alpha 1 4 glycosidic linkage. Alpha 1 4, alpha 1 4 linkage. Okay. Similarly, we will see for isomaltose, alpha D glucose plus alpha D glucose. The same units are there, but see the linkage is different. So, the disaccharide is different. Now, the linkage is alpha 1 6. Alpha 1, alpha 6 linkage. So, maltose and isomaltose differ in linkage. The difference in the linkage in the sugar units. This is a question. Okay. Now, next one we will see lactose, also called milk sugar. Here the sugar units are D-galactose and beta-D glucose. Different sugar units are there and linkage is beta-1,4 linkage. Okay. Beta-1, beta-4 linkage. Similarly, for lactulose, it is alpha-D-galactose plus beta D fructose. Now, here the linkage is alpha 1 to beta 4. So, remember these linkages. 
these are very important see in this case in this case everything is same except the linkage the linkage makes the different disaggregate so this is a very important question and these are also very important now we'll see non reducing disaccharides see earlier we saw reducing disaccharides now it is non reducing disaccharides we'll see the disaccharide tree hallose sugar of insect hemolymph yeast and fungi okay sugar units alpha d glucose alpha d glucose similar units linkage alpha 1 alpha 1 linkage okay so it's important because the tree hallose found in insect hemolymph okay you can get a question on this second one is sucrose we all know cane sugar cane sugar that is sucrose here the units are alpha d glucose and beta d fructose the linkages are important linkages are alpha 1 beta 2 linkage so these non reducing sugars are also very important you should know the linkages as well as the sugar units these components now we'll see oligosaccharides see oligosaccharides oligo means few now they yield 3 to 10 molecules of monosaccharides units on hydrolysis and polysaccharides they yield more than 10 molecules how you differentiate between oligo and poly oligo is 3 to 10 and poly they are more than 10 molecules of monosaccharides in hydrolysis they are further classified in onto the following types on the basis of monosaccharide units homopolysaccharides and heteropolysaccharides okay so homopolysaccharides means they are also called glycans okay polysaccharides also called glycans so homopolysaccharides called homoglycans homo means same polymers of same types of monosaccharide units these are further classified as structural and storage units examples of structural polysaccharides include cellulose inulin and chitin these are very important these are the examples of homopolysaccharides they are cellulose inulin and chitin and these are the structural polysaccharides also okay examples of storage polysaccharides they are starch and glycogen now we'll see heteropolysaccharides or heteroglycans these are also called heteroglycans what are these these are the polymers of different monosaccharide units or their derivatives examples are mucopolysaccharides or gags gags stands for glycosamino glycans we'll see some mucopolysaccharidoses what are these mucopolysaccharidoses these are hereditary disorders hereditary disorders which occur due to which occur due to the defect in enzymes that result in lysosomal degradation of the lysosomal degradation of the polysaccharide okay so we'll see the classification we'll see the inheritance we'll see the enzyme defect we'll see the urinary metabolite all are important you can expect a urinary metabolite in a question and you will be getting to answer the type of the mucopolysaccharide doses okay so you should know all of these these are very important the first one is mps1 h it is called as haller disease you can you can see from here itself here is written h mps1 h mucopolysaccharide doses 1 h it's haller disease it is autosomal recessive and the defect the enzyme defect that is l iduro not iduronidase okay and see the urinary metabolite these are very important dimethyl sulfate heparin sulfate okay so go through this learn the names learn the type and the inheritance enzymes means this whole table is very important you can expect any of them as the question mps1 s second one is mps1 s here s is written this shay disease it is also autosomal recessive here also the same enzyme defect is there l iduron dase and urinary metabolite is different you get dimethyl sulfate dimethyl sulfate as a urinary metabolite the next one is mps2 it is hunter's disease the first one was mps1 mps1 s was shay disease okay mps1 h was 
Hurler's disease. Now this one is MPS2 Hunter's disease. Okay, this is X-linked recessive. Those two were autosomal recessive. Here the enzyme defect iduronate, iduronate sulfate is. See the urinary metabolites: dimethyl sulfate and heparin sulfate. Okay, now MPS2A. See MPS3A. This is San Filippo A disease. Read the names: San Filippo A. This is important. The names: San Filippo A, autosomal recessive, heparin sulfate, and sulfatase. The enzyme defect is, and you get the urinary metabolite as heparin sulfate. The next one is MPS3B. This is San Filippo B disease. Okay. This is also autosomal recessive, but the enzyme here is different. This is N-acetyl glucosa. Glucosa mini days and the urinary metabolite is heparin sulfate, same urinary metabolite, but you got the different enzymes and so the names are also different. San Filippo A, San Filippo B, the inheritance is also the same. The next one is MPS three C. C, this is San Filippo C disease. Okay, this is also autosomal recessive. Enzyme is different, but the urinary metabolite is same. You have got the same urinary metabolite in all San Filippo diseases. Okay, but enzyme was different. So see the enzyme glucosa mini min, glucosa minide and acetyl transferase. This is heparin sulfate is the urinary metabolite. Similarly, MPS three D. We'll see San Filippo D disease it is also autosomal recessive. Enzyme is different and the urinary metabolite is same. Now MPS four A. Now this is the fourth one, mucopolysaccharidosis 4A. It is Morchio A, autosomal recessive. Okay. Now enzyme we'll see. Galactosa means six sulfates, keratin sulfate and chondroitin six sulfate. Now here we have got different. Whatever we were seeing till now, different urinary metabolites are here. We have started with MPS4, keratin sulfate and chondroitin six sulfate. Now the next one we'll see. MPS four B, that is Morchio B, autosomal recessive. Beta galactosidase is defective, and urinary metabolite is keratin sulfate. Okay, MPS six. This is very important. Marotic slamy, marotic slamy. Remember the names. Remember the type. Autosomal recessive inheritance. Enzyme C. Enzyme is aryl sulfatase B. You get get the question like this. Aryl sulfatase B is defective in which of the following mucopolysaccharidosis? Answer is marotic slimy or MPS six. Okay, the urinary metabolite is dimethyl sulfate. MPS seven. This is known as Lai disease. It is also autosomal recessive. The enzyme defect is beta glucuron dis, and you will see the. Urinary metabolite that is dimethyl sulfate and heparin sulfate. Now we'll be seeing some frequently asked questions from this topic. Okay. Okay. First of all, we'll see CnH2n is the formula for monosaccharides, disaccharide, polysaccharide, or oligosaccharide. So this is the formula for monosaccharide. A is the answer here. Second one, all are reducing sugars except C the options. Sucrose, lactose, fructose, and glucose. Now, all of you know sucrose is not a reducing sugar. Rest of all of them are reducing sugars. So, answer will be sucrose here. Next one. Which depositions result in cataract? Glucose, sugar means galactose and sugar alcohols. Okay. So. Cataract results from the deposition of sugar alcohols. Okay, generally dulcitol. Dulcitol is the sugar alcohol which is there involved in cataract. Next one, glycosaminoglycans present in cornea. They are keratin sulfate, hyaluronic acid, chondroitin sulfate, or dimethyl sulfate. Okay, correct option is keratin sulfate. We have got two types of keratin sulfate. One. And two, the keratin sulfate one is found in cornea, and the keratin sulfate two is found in cartilage. Now, these are some of the questions which were asked 
in the exams from this topic okay i have already told you many questions which may be asked each and every point from this topic is an mcq prepare this topic well go through the synopsis go through the video prepare this from the textbook also if you want to in detail go through textbooks like vasudevan satyanarayana and prepare this topic well you may expect many questions from this topic i hope this video was helpful for you thank you for watching the video